We are reporting for you tonight on the eve of the arraignment of a former president. Tomorrow marks the first court hearing in this case, New York versus Donald Trump defendant. This is the legal process which compelled Trump to come to New York today from Florida because he had to. The only alternative would have been resisting arrest and making the NYPD come get him, which they're capable of doing for any defendant. Tomorrow, Trump goes downtown to the New York court building, and like any citizen or any criminal defendant, he will then surrender temporarily to the custody of the lawful authorities there. We know a bit about that process, the fingerprinting, the booking, and like anyone, afforded his rights and given the opportunity to enter his plea. Now, authorities have ramped up security, including thousands of members of NYPD that we're told are on a stand-ready order. But lately, Donald Trump has been trying to promote and fundraise off the charges. And it's worth recalling tonight, as we know more than we used to, know more than we did last week, this promotional effort by Mr. Trump is actually his plan B, after the calls for protests repeatedly fizzled. There were no large crowds for Donald Trump in Florida or New York today compared to the infamous influx of visitors which did gather for the convicted sedition on January, uh, January 6th in D.C. Now, New York authorities say this time they see no signs of that level of gathering as of tonight. They also say quite clearly and publicly they will both deter and confront and arrest any attempts at disruption or violence tomorrow. So that's the terrain tonight as the United States embarks on this fundamentally legal process. I could tell you a few more updates. Donald Trump now swiftly beefing up his legal team. He's tapped a new former federal prosecutor as lead counsel, Todd Blanche, to lead his lawyers on this New York case. We know that's new because that lawyer actually recently left his firm emailing colleagues. He decided to, quote, represent Trump in the recently charged DA case. Well, news of that recent charging famously broke on Thursday. So the email sounds like it was written since then. Now, Trump's lawyers are also asking the judge to bar cameras from the courtroom tomorrow. Now, that does continue the usual practice in New York. But it also serves as a reminder that while Donald Trump claims to welcome any and all publicity, and his team tried to do their version of publicity during the day today, the claim that they welcome all publicity as a posture is false. It's demonstrably false. Mr. Trump prizes the images that he can control and that he thinks show him in control. Well, tomorrow, the idea, the prospect of one photographer capturing one possible image of him in this process under the legal and literal custody of others, following rules he did not set in court, that's an image he's trying to prevent. So again, let's keep an eye on the facts, the ball, the law, the evidence, and not overreact to demonstrably false claims like, oh, he welcomes all this, he's into it. Well, if he welcomed all of it, he would allow or not oppose photos tomorrow during it. Now, we're going to do this in an orderly way. I promise you that. That's how we've always tried to cover the news here. And this is a different kind of news. And there are a lot of pressures and some big passions out there in the country as we go forward. So we're just going to do this straight up. What will happen tomorrow? We turn to the law, which is supposed to apply equally to all people, even if it's big news that it's being applied to a former president. So here is right now the official New York Unified Court System rules and how they explain it directly to defendants facing what Trump faces tomorrow, arraignment. Defendants are told the arraignment is the first time you go to court in front of a judge. You're told what the charges are against you and what your rights are. You answer the charges by telling the court if you are guilty or not guilty. Trump will enter that plea tomorrow, speaking the words, we're told, he's expected to plead not guilty. So Donald Trump tomorrow will speak the words, quote, not guilty in open court. And he will not be allowed to make any other remarks in that setting under this arraignment process. That's under the rules. Now then under this kind of case, we know under the rules he will be released. And here's what all defendants, including Donald Trump, are told about that. If you are released, you must come back to court for every court date. If you don't come to court, the judge will order a warrant for your arrest. This means that the police will be notified to find and arrest you and bring you to court. 
That applies to Donald Trump and everyone else who's a citizen or person inside the jurisdiction, in this case of New York, just as the law applies to everyone inside the jurisdiction of the United States. Now, that reference there is to what's sometimes called a bench warrant, which is the judge's power, in this case a kind of unitary power, meaning they decide and there comes the warrant, to bring people back by force if needed. I mention that tonight because it is the same power which made Donald Trump come to New York today. So while he tried to up the spectacle of this or claim he's fundraising off this, as is often the case, remember, the real story may be off camera and away from the PR and the political rhetoric. Today was a legally compelled trip. Just as Trump's future appearances at this court in this process will not be his decision or his discretion. If the case isn't dismissed and heads towards trial, as long as the case is open, the people with power here are the DA, who drives the process, the charges, much of the timeline. And then, of course, the judge who oversees this and can check the DA's power. And if the DA oversteps or is seen as lacking evidence or being political, there's a judge there to check them. And if this reaches trial, then the people on the jury will matter. Not Donald Trump or his political allies or his press tactics or his Internet posts or his claims, some of which are demonstrably false, that he's into this, that he welcomes this, that today was a trip he chose to take. This is the rule of law in America. This is how it works. These are the defendant's rights, but also the defendant's obligations. And as you will hear us say throughout the process, because we take it seriously, the burden remains on the government, on that same powerful DA, to prove the case. And defendant does not have a burden in our system when it is well and properly applied, the defendant is supposed to be, in all senses, legally presumed innocent. Here we are, and everyone is coming at it initially with their perspective. There are people who've been rooting for Donald Trump's fall for a million reasons, and this is a reason they'll accept. Well, as you know, in the eyes of the law, that's not good enough. Nope. It has to be provable, and he will face the process. Then you have these people, and you, as, you, as you've told us, used to have begin common cause with them, who will attack anything. They have no line. They have no floor. Insurrection, steal the election, end American democracy, racism, misogyny. Take, There's no— Take top-secret documents, oh, go sure, hide them in your office. That. No— uh, no floor. The question I have for you tonight, because I was thinking about having you back here, we've talked about, and we can get more into some of the details because I have legal questions for you, but big picture, I was thinking about those folks, and you know them. And I was thinking, you know, they're here on the attack, and they are trying to, as they did with the insurrection, they're trying to confuse, trick, or lie to millions of people who might end up believing them that this is out of the blue, that this is selective prosecution. Where did this come from? I'm wondering how you feel about that. If somebody says, oh, this is out of the blue, Mr. Weisselberg's in Rikers. Mr. Manafort served time. You served time. Uh, and while the cases are somewhat different, there is a trail of convictions, including the Trump org. Can you take seriously uh, your former fellow travelers who say this is out of the blue? No. And I also get disgusted by our members of Congress that want to make that sort of allegation. Donald Trump stood on that same aircraft and he turned around and he said, ask Michael Cohen. He's my lawyer. He'll tell you. Well, I have been telling you. I've been telling actually the world, going back since the House Oversight Committee, exactly who, you know, who Donald Trump is and exactly what transpired here. But as you just stated, these individuals do not want to hear the truth. They are so deeply ingrained into this cult of Donald J. Trump that now allegedly They've sent him $7 million. Now, this reminds me so much of the personal financial statements when he would say, I'm worth $6 billion. Actually, you know, I'm worth seven, And then it becomes 10 all in a matter of a second. I don't believe this $7 million that had been raised. And you've been on the inside when they do this. You think yes. it's another distraction. Yes, and what yeah. he's trying to do is he's trying to show everybody how popular he is. This is all part of the Trump ruse. Look how popular I am. People are sending me money simply because I'm asking them to. They are my supporters. And it's not only four million. No, 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 that's too little. It's, now it's up to seven million. Well, if there's so many people concerned, why aren't they out in the streets today? Yeah, they certainly weren't. I mean, that was, I don't know, it looked like a bake sale over at a high school football game. It didn't. I mean, there Do was you think no that's because people are deterred by how many people have gotten in trouble 
supporting him, meaning criminal trouble, or do you think he's lost some of that heat? Oh, I believe he lost a lot of the heat. Mm -hmm. I don't. I truly don't believe that the popularity of Donald Trump is where it was six months ago yeah. or a year ago. I think it's waning. I think people are sick and tired of this nonsense every single day. We wake up and we're wondering what Captain Chaos is going to do today. Yeah, no, I think that's fair, and you've been there. Uh, I promise we get into the legal. Uh, Cy Vance was the old DA brag, you know, for folks who aren't as New York, uh, busy with their lives around the country. Not everyone keeps track of local sure. prosecutors. So DA Bragg is the pretty recently elected prosecutor. He replaced Cy Vance, who is talking about how the feds told him to stand down in the case that involved you. Let's take a look. I was asked by the U.S. Attorney's Office of the Southern District to stand down uh, on our investigation, which had commenced involving the Trump Organization. I was somewhat surprised after uh, Mr. Cohen pleaded guilty uh, that the federal government did not proceed on, uh, on the areas in which it asked me to stand down. I'll, I'll give my interpretation, you'll give your reaction. It sounds like he's saying that he was led to believe that the feds were going to go forward on that beyond you, you were the lawyer, you were the intermediary. Uh, people can assess your history, you've been very open about it, but you were not the driver, you were not the beneficiary, you were not the candidate. Sounds like he's saying that he was led to believe they were gonna go beyond you, and they didn't. Um, what did you think of what Mr. Vance said in that new interview? I think he was just told to stand down, that they did not want him continuing to do anything simply because they were protecting Trump. Is it any different than what we saw in Jeffrey Berman's book? There is a real problem in this country when it comes to accountability by those who are entrusted with power. And I'm referring to the DOJ. Legitimately, six or seven different members of Congress have asked for inspector generals to open up investigations into my case. Not one single investigation has been open. And you have to ask yourself why. My FOIA requests let me, let me to this, this day have still been denied. When he says that, does that match your experience as you, you were dealing with the feds, SDNY, you were a defendant, then you were convicted? Does that match your experience or do you not know? Because Mr. Vance is saying basically the feds were trying to wall off and tell the local prosecutor to just drop it. No, it's what I've ultimately learned from the drip, drip, drip of information. Yeah. You know, I even filed an action, uh, a grievance with the New York State Bar Association against Jeffrey Berman. First, within weeks, they sent me a dismissal onto it. We're not going to investigate because Jeffrey Berman in his book states that he did nothing wrong. So I asked for a reevaluation, sent them additional information, including Rachel Maddow's entire segment on it, which was a brilliant um, dissection Looking of it. Look at the it. history, yeah. yeah. I received today a letter from them saying, no, we stand by our position. And this is the problem when it comes to accountability. If that was you, Ari, certainly if it was me, they'd be all over you. And it's the same yeah. issue that we're seeing with Donald Trump. He should not receive a single benefit greater than you or I or any other person who is being charged. Yeah. Mention something and I want to ask you about it. There are people, journalists, some commentators, legal experts who say, if Mr. Cohen wants to be the most helpful to this investigation and trial, he should speak only in the courtroom and when called as a witness at trial and nowhere else. Now, viewers, I just like to be as transparent as possible. Viewers can see, we appreciate you coming on. We've heard from Trump people, you know that. Mm -hmm. We've heard from you and we'll hear from other people. So I think you're providing information that's of the public interest. But what do you say tonight, Michael, to those, I guess, critics of you speaking out? Yeah, they're critics because they don't know the facts. And the one thing that I have on my side is truth. And the truth, whether I'm here on your show, I'm not talking about the indictments or the, what I believe those indictments are, the charges. I'm basically talking about the process. I'm talking about things that I know outside of the DA's investigation. Now, I cannot allow people like Costello or any of these other pundits to sit there and continue to attack my credibility when so far, since I testified before the House Oversight Committee, that everything that I stated is accurate. And so I have proven that again and again. And it, once again, I'm not asking people to believe what I'm saying. 
Look at the evidence. Look at the documents that will be presented by the district attorney. Yeah. Well, I'll give you one follow-up on that, and then, as mentioned, I want to ask you about what Donald Trump might be facing if, it, if he doesn't I mean, how win. could I have ignored what Costello did, going out there and lying to the American people about me and not respond back? Well, I thought it was striking. We covered this. So Mr. Costello, to remind everyone, it was sort of a late entry into the public debate, but this is someone who is a Steve Bannon lawyer, a Trump ally. Rudy Giuliani. Rudy Giuliani. Buddy. And he sort of seemed to try to pass himself off as having special information about you, but he's clearly on their side. And by the way, I, I say this to everybody, Mr. Costello has been invited on the program. He's welcome to come on. Unlike you, unlike some of the Trump lawyers, Mr. Costello has not availed himself to any cross-examination. Um, but, you know, there's a saying, and I don't say it lightly, uh, but it's a criticism of him. Uh, he was trying to do you dirty. You think? And he was trying to take what any lawyer would know would be at a minimum um, privilege or professional communications, if you believe him that it was supposed to be that, and or uh, basically impugn you for the, any mental state or stress you were under, among other things. So I mentioned that about the sure. FOB. I'll ask you this, though, not citing Mr. Costello, but if Donald Trump's lawyers get you on the stand and in cross-examination, because I'm curious, since you're here, I'm going to ask you, they say, look what this man put you through and then separate you from your family. And then you end up behind bars. And you would be understandably upset with him. And you have spoken out at times about why you are upset with him. Why should this jury, Mr. Mr. Cohen, take everything you're saying as 100% serious and not tinged or tainted by your understandable negative feelings towards him? What do you say to that? Let's go to the documents. I don't want anyone to take a single word of what I am saying and use that as the basis for a potential conviction. Let's go, as Warner Wolf used to say, let's take it to the video. Mm. Fair. That's fair. Uh, the final question. You've been through this in a way many people have not. <laughs> if Donald Trump goes in tomorrow and he sees how this court system works and that he is not the president of that court and he is not the chief judge of that court, and he's not the prosecutor of that court. And in that physicality, something that he's seen on TV, that he's seen you and others go through, actually he experiences it himself, not through empathy or sympathy or gathering knowledge. You know, in journalism, we listen to people and we build knowledge. I can't speak to his mental, personal process, but he is going to learn in a different way through the primary experience. And he entertains the prospect that he could be convicted and he could lose his appeals and he could at the end of that line potentially, he's legally presumed innocent, he could end up in prison. Based on your long years of service with him, how will he process that? Very poorly. Um, you know, as I like to call him sometimes in my tweets, Diaper Donald will be filling up that diaper because he, this is not something that Donald is capable of either understanding or contending with. He, as you stated accurately, he believes he could control every situation. This is not a situation that he has any control over, and that's making him sick to his stomach. And you think he'll feel genuine fear? Yes. I think right now he's beyond petrified.